began to notice differences in how I was moving and how I was feeling. Dr. Bedlack gave Phil a number of tests. He was 99% sure that it was ALS. There is no cure for ALS at this time. ALS stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. And so people with ALS have usually pretty rapidly progressive disability and shortened survival. The lifetime risk of getting ALS is about one in 600, which makes it seem pretty common to me. I mean, most people now have 600 Facebook friends or more, so that means most of us is gonna know at least one person with ALS. Everything is rare till it happens to you. We can't control a diagnosis, but we can control our way of dealing with it. What differentiates Duke's ALS Clinic from other hospitals? And my answer would be everything. It's a model of what an academic medical center should do for those diseases. We have probably one of the most comprehensive multidisciplinary teams in the world, and also one of the largest clinics in the world. And we've also got our own unique focus on alternative therapies and also on these ALS reversals. I never knew there was such a thing as an ALS reversal when I started. You won't find that in any textbooks. I came across my first case four to five years ago now. She really was progressing like an ALS patient, eventually to quadriplegia, couldn't move anything. It was thought to be near death by good doctors. And now I have video evidence that she's back to normal. So I'm hoping that by studying these ALS reversals that I might be able to stumble onto a new pathway that we can uh, manipulate to help everybody else with ALS or maybe stumble onto a treatment regimen that these folks have in common that's working. We still don't know why the vast majority of people get their disease. And I think we're gonna need to learn why the person sitting in front of me has it in order to fix it. So I think in the next five years, we're gonna have cures for some forms of ALS. Breakthroughs in the future are going to come through philanthropic contributions. There can be a sense of doom with this disease, of hopelessness, like there's nothing we can do. And there actually are a lot of things you can do to speed the cure for ALS. The LVH ALS Foundation, which stands for the Larry Vance Hughes Foundation, was set up in the fall of 2013 after the diagnosis of ALS to my stepfather, uh, Larry Vance Hughes. First year we raised 300,000, and I think to date we've raised a little over 750,000 in the, uh, the three years we've done it. So we created the Free Lawn Fund to raise money, friends, and awareness to fund ALS research. We're blessed to have a nice grant from the ALS Association that allows us to maintain the infrastructure of the clinic, the multidisciplinary team, but there's a lot of things that that grant does not cover. It does not cover a lot of the education and advocacy that we do. It does not cover any of the research that we do. I met Dr. Bedlack actually at a, at a member guest golf tournament at Bermuda Run. We started talking about the foundation and what we could do to help. Rick is one of the smartest and most compassionate doctors I've probably ever met. It's settling to, to see him being himself and, you know, not necessarily in a white coat, but, you know, uh, uh, having <laughs> Never some, in a some white some coat. style about him. I trust him 100%, and I can raise the money. I may not know exactly how he's going to find a cure, but I do know in my heart that if he's not the one that finds it, he'll be a big part of it. If the distance between us and a cure is money, that's a crazy reason not to have a cure. People could look at this and say, well, I'm not in the public eye. How can I do something like this? Every little bit helps. Everything from a pig picking to a church social to a huge national level kind of thing, they're all good. This has given me a purpose, it's given me an investment, to invest in Rick, to invest in Duke, to be able to find a cure. I hate bullies, and I think ALS is a bully. We don't have to just stand by and let it happen. And we're not letting ALS be a bully to our patients anymore. We're standing up to it. We're finding ways to make their lives better, to make their lives longer. And we've got a lot of hope here that ultimately one day we'll have an answer, we'll be able to fix this for them.